Good morning, one and all, and welcome to this morning's video. So this morning I have three pairs on watch, and those are Euro Kiwi, West Texas Oil, and Soybean USD. So let's start off with my favorite of the bunch, which is Euro Kiwi. So I've been doing a little bit of soul searching uh, the past day or so, and been thinking about my trading, as well as trying to educate you guys and girls as best I can. I you do have to remember that I am also a student as well, a student of the Falcon community, and I'm also trying to improve, as well as teach, I'm also trying to improve my own trading now. As you may have noticed, I have a very low trade frequency, so I've been thinking about risk profiling. I've been thinking about what I deem to be low risk and higher risk and just reassessing that slightly. And one of the things that helps with that, in my opinion, and when I was thinking about this is not having too much on your charts. Okay. So if you have too much on your charts, which is why a lot of brokers like you to have lots and lots of different things on your charts, because the more things you have on your charts, the more confusion and apprehension it could not fear. I don't fear the market, but it can cause you to perceive too many things, which makes you, uh, you know, more susceptible to mistakes in the market okay they the brokers want you to have all these things on your chart because the more things you have on your chart the less clarity you have now the less clarity you have the more likely you are to lose money okay and then they obviously they profit from it so one of the things about the falcon strategy which we trade is that we have you know as much much less on our charts than most traders okay but i've been trying to simplify it a little bit more so where as you would often see me have you know ray lines and, and so forth on the higher time frames on the weekly chart etc if we were to zoom out to here i'm just trying to keep it down to the absolute minimum which is relevant to the actual trades that i'm looking for okay so this is going to give me greater clarity and i've also been thinking about as i said risk profiling but i'm going to get into this now and i'm going to keep that a, a fixture in my trading so I'm going to be a bit more aggressive now with the entries that I'm looking at. And these are not, I didn't just decide, wake up and decide, right, I'm going to be aggressive. There is logic to it. And I've been assessing certain aspects of what I deem to be low risk and higher risk. And then asking myself, well, is that actually higher risk? For example, I, we'll, when we get down to soybean USD, I'll explain that a little bit more clearly. But uh, Euro Kiwi, my favorite of the bunch. So, you can see that we're dropping out now. If this candle closes anywhere like this by the end of today, of course, it's not uh, closed yet. There is a very, very high chance we're dropping out to where you can see that consolidation there, where we had that red candle and perhaps a lot lower. But as we draw down to the daily, you can see we have an area of consolidation here. If we just drop down to the four hour, just to see, sometimes I do that just to see what it looks like. You can see it's a sharp move. Okay. So we have, a, well, not that sharp a move, but it certainly is the start of this. It is the start of this running channel, okay? It was the origin of this volume that was built there, which caused price, once this channel was completed, caused price to drop out and smash through that low and that low, okay? So that tells me that there's a lot of volume there potentially, okay? And what happens... And, and the clue often that there is a lot of volume there uh, is the fact that we get a reversal structure. We get this one, two, three. We do wick slightly above it, but often if something, if an area is very val valuable, we often break up above it a little bit more than that. Okay, so I'm not surprised that we got the, the uh, corrective sell-off. Let's try that again. There we go. We get the corrective sell-off. People trying to sell it whilst the orders that are up here and still and being placed in this area are dragging price back up. We then break a little bit further above, wash out all the liquidity that was still sat there dragging price up, and then we get the impulsive sell-off. Then we get the impulse correction continuation. I didn't manage to get an entry in here, but I was looking for an entry in here. If I had have gotten it, they got the entry, look what would have ensued, okay? Feel free to watch my previous videos. We get we completely smashed through, and I said to you that if we measure these usually the the the, the next wave out 
uh, is of a similar length to the preceding impulse, okay? And you can see that we haven't yet fulfilled that. We also measure it on the break because the volume that's been generated can dictate how far price has moved. Okay, we haven't fulfilled either of those measurements yet, which gives me a clue that this is potentially an impulse correction continuation, what's happening now, to push even lower to fulfill this move, which I previous, previously measured earlier in the week. So if so, we've not responded to these lows, okay? So we had the near misses here to this low. So in theory, we could have in theory, we could have tapped below and come back up. But with this amount of momentum to the downside preceding this, I'm not surprised that we just smashed through, which is what I was anticipating. So that gives me a clue, given that we just smashed through this low. Uh, that gives me a clue, the fact that we've consolidated afterwards, that price did not find enough liquidity that to, at these lows to send it back to the upside. So this gives me a clue that this is just an impulse correction continuation to push lower which would take us down to that area okay which i was talking about previously so the next thing i ask myself is okay well how can i get in here this is quite a large correction so now i'm dropping down to the one hour chart i can see there's a a bit of a wick there okay so and even on the we have this uh, daily close here. There's a wick there. I ask myself, does is there any reason why price would come up to fill that wick? Okay, it's bearish, so it doesn't necessarily. Uh, the candle was bearish, so it doesn't necessarily have to come back up. But if we analyze this, okay, so we have the corrective move up to this area. But how how has price responded? Okay, so if we look here. Price has has come down, with the exception of this one candle. Price has come down, has fallen correctively. And what I've said in previous videos is if we fall correctively, generally speaking, the next uh, we have an impulse back up. OK, so where would it likely be going back up to? We just look at this on the 15 minute chart. You can see we can actually zoom into the five minute here. We can see a little area of consolidation here where there was a little bit of a sharp move up, sharp move down. And then if we zoom back out. We can see that price near missed to that area, giving me a clue that this is potentially the area of value, the origin of this correction, which seems to be forming now. OK, now, if this is the middle section, so if this is a middle section, this here to push back up, this is the middle section. Notice once again, I've talked about this previously. This is something I've been noticing more of. We have a corrective move into a more impulsive middle section. And what did I say previously? Of course, we haven't really come out of this middle section yet. But when we have a corrective move into up and an impul more impulsive middle section, usually it's the case that we end up with a, a three touch structural approach. So something like, you know, something like that up to the area and then the middle section within the three touch structural approach becomes the more corrective middle section up to there. OK, now, if that was to happen, OK, then obviously you don't need to be a genius to work out that that would take a, a period of time. But just because we never know what's going to happen in trading and things can happen a little bit more quickly than we otherwise anticipated. As it stands until the market shows me otherwise, this is the this is the origin of this overall correction. And what I'll be looking for is a tap into this area as it stands. So a tap into this area of value. And then I would be looking for if this was to occur by the end of the day, we would be up in this area and we would have I would be looking for a 15 minute rejection or a phase line break. So this would be a one hour structure. I would be able to see the structure on the one hour chart. So therefore that my rules dictate that I can drop down to the 15 minute chart to look for entries. So I'll be happy with a phase line break in here. And if I had to, you know, put my stop loss just above this trend line, I'd be happy to do so. That wouldn't compromise the risk to reward. OK, just to protect myself in case price came up to here. Uh, but as I say, I would anticipate that this is going to be more of a three touch structural approach if it does come up to that area. And I will assess that accordingly. That will be... Um, obviously ready next week if that was to occur. But that's what I'm going to be looking for, um, for from this pair. Okay, so that is, 
euro kiwi and then i'll be able to manage it down to the low for about five percent and then down to these lows for about 12 percent. and i would use the in that instance i would use the mechanical management tool and i would measure from range to range so in this instance because i wouldn't be taking a flag within this i would be measuring from this range here and then even then that would give me something in the region of even that would give me something in the region of 9%. So that is um, Euro Kiwi. So I have an alert set just below the area of value. If it does not trigger, I will not be looking to place a trade. So West Texas Oil. Uh, West Texas Oil, once again, trying to keep things to a minimum. So price tapped into this area here. We responded from that area. Okay, well, there was a sharp move. We come to the downside. Price leaves a little bit of a, uh, there was a consolidation here. Okay, you can see that volume was built here. We tap into the area, we move to the downside. We we then have this um, this kind of head and shoulders pattern here. We have the left shoulder, that's just a bit of a wick. Right shoulder, when the right shoulder protrudes higher than the left shoulder, that's often a good sign that we're going to smash through. We do, we smash through the, the neckline. And I'm just seeing this at this moment in time. Um, so I've got this on just to show that we smashed through that low. Okay. And what did we do? We consolidated underneath it, suggesting that we weren't, this wasn't an area for price to, that price was going to respond to for a move to the upside to potentially tap into these highs again, giving me a clue that this is just an impulse correction continuation to push lower, which would take us down to this where there was a sharp move here. Okay. I've got this on just to denote that we could push lower because this is the start of this overall corrective channel, but this would be where I would anticipate profit taking because we would have filled that impulse correction continuation. And it's also the sharpest move that I can see within this whole consolidation. Okay. So therefore, Okay, you can see once again, we have the origin of this channel. I said in previous videos that when we get something like this, it's not normally the case that we tap above, tap below, and then flag. Normally what happens is we get, I said, normally we get something like that. Okay, and then we get more some, something like that, and then more that kind of structure, which is exactly what's happened. We have that near miss uh, to that high once again giving me a clue that this is the area of value particularly because it's the origin of the move so therefore what i will be waiting for this correction is now it's it's, it's quite a large correction so therefore i wouldn't be trying trying to um i wouldn't be trying to call the top as it were with a risk entry there's also the fact that in the sequence as well i'm just looking at how price has moved we can see that within the sequence, there's been quite a lot of sharp pullback, sharp pullback, quite a sharp pullback here. Along the way, there's been sharp pullback, sharp pullback. So to try and call the top would be more risky because you might get another sharp pullback and then drop something like that. So we do it. Whoops. Oh, shit. I've deleted my forecast. Right. There we go. We're back in, we're back in business. Do excuse my French. So if we tip tap into this area of value, I'll be looking for a a one hour impulse down below it uh, and a, in this instance a two touch 15 minute continuation not a five minute just because of the, the the sequence in these sharp pullbacks because that you could easily be tagged in and tagged out so i'm just waiting for a slightly more deliberate see a two touch 15 minute continuation and then i would look to get short on the break or within it with a five minute risk entry and then i'll be able to manage it down to here but i would anticipate this with all this volume smashing straight through and heading towards these lows okay so that is west texas oil i have an alert set uh, this looks more likely to shape up than euro kiwi in my opinion because you can see we're we're gravitating back towards that high now so we shall see what happens and um right let's move on to the last pair so i was saying in um uh, I, I was talking about risk profiling so let's just zoom out to this uh, zoom out to the higher time frames so we have we have this structure here that which I'm interested in. I've just got this on to denote that we're trading through this low. Okay, we're not trading above it. We're trading through it, which is actually at, which is fine for a move to the downside because if we're trading through it, if price is broken below it once and it's broken below it again, 
and then we react from the highs and push down as we have, then what that tells me is that price did not find enough liquidity at this low to send it to the upside. So this is not really relevant, but I've got it on just to denote that we're trading through it and not above it. Okay. And then what you can see here on the daily chart is that we have this high. There was a sharp move up followed by a sharp move down. And we get to this area by way of a three touch reversal structure. Once again, I don't have trend lines on the chart unless they're un trying to time a risk entry. Okay. So you know, and, and I need a bit of accuracy just for simplistic reasons. I keep trend lines off the chart once again, just to, you know, keep my mind uncluttered. Okay. What I like about this is we've responded from this high. We broke just above evening star formation. We push to the downside. We have a near miss to this low, which price will likely uh, take out. Okay. Take out this low, which it near miss too. You can see that we've got daily momentum to the downside. One thing that you will notice about this is that so this is one that i would have avoided and i would i would have seen it as high risk high um but i've been kind of reprofiling my risk okay now if you were to try and so this is my area of value if i was to try and time a risk entry here that would be higher risk because you could easily be tagged in and tagged out because it's not normal for a correction to be this large high, so high up in a a run okay in a range so from here to down to here okay it's not this is not typical price action okay so this would be higher risk because price might be coming back up to form an m style pattern to tap into those highs where we get that kind of m style pattern like that and then we drop from there okay but one of the things that i think where i've been a little bit too over cautious is that if we get what are we looking for today from this pair and one of the things that is difficult for many people to do in trading, particularly men, in my experience, is to say, you know, maybe I need to look at how I'm trading. Maybe I need to reassess certain things rather than saying, no, I know everything, blah, blah, blah. I'm not wrong. One of the things that's really difficult is to say, maybe I need to assess what I'm doing and be a bit more aggressive if the people that are teaching me are finding trades, but I'm, I'm not finding as many. Okay. So one of the things that I've kind of changed my perspective on is that if we tap into this area of value and we push down below this area of interest, okay, we would have that, that three touch structure there for one. Okay. But the fact that we would have impulsed down from this area would have suggested that when, you know, price doesn't need to tap into these highs. Okay. That's the market showing its hand. Price doesn't need to tap into these highs to head to the downside. So if we get the correction afterwards, which be, would be the banks and the bigger players stacking their orders in the majority, you know, it, typically speaking, then this is the market showing its hand. Look, I don't need to go all the way back up to here to collect all that liquidity to move to the downside. So therefore, you're good to go. You're good to get involved. OK, so the push down and the flag afterwards is price showing you that it doesn't need to go up to there. So therefore, this becomes a low risk position versus, as I said, if you were to try and and call a risk entry, call a rejection from the top there, okay, because of how wide this has become and voluminous. I know some people like that word relative to the impulse down which has preceded it, okay. But because we have this very large correction, and because it's not typical for this to occur so high up in the run, what I'll be looking for is a tap into the area of value, a one hour impulse down below the area of interest. And then a two touch 15 minute continuation as a minimum, not a five minute, because a five minute could just be a temporary stall for this M style pattern up to there. What do I think is more likely? I actually think it's more likely that we will break to the upside, perhaps trap some people in too early for the reasons that I was just talking about, who, who try and get short from there, push up to the upside and then drop. OK, I think that's more likely, but. We don't know what the market's going to happen and we have to remain neutral. So if my entry does shape up, then great. If it doesn't, if it just messes around, then I'm not looking to place a trade. Okay. So that is, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to try and be more aggressive and I'm going to, I've kind of reclassified my uh, trade risk profiling, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it encourages you to look at your own trading and think, you know, maybe I look, maybe I don't know as much as I think I am, or maybe I do know a lot, but maybe I just need to reclassify certain things. Okay. But anyway, have a great day. Have a great weekend, folks. And I will see you again in the next video. Adios.